Batman versus Catwoman. The new story arc, the Gotham War, is going on in DC right now. Batman has been out of action recently due to the fact that he was lost in the multiverse and then stuck in his own nightmares with the night terrors. But now he's finally waking up. So what happened in Gotham while he was removed from Gotham? Well, Catwoman took over and she's come up with a better plan. And that's the basis of today's crossover event, The Gotham War. Today we're going to be covering the alpha issue that kicks off the entire event. This is Comic Storian. I take some of your comic books, I turn them into audio dramas, letting you know what's going on in the world of comics so you know what to add to your collection. And today, it's Gotham Wars Part 1. Roland walks back to his small apartment, his body broken and bruised from the job with Professor Pig. The colorful villain went crazy and began to beat him. Roland sighs as he walks through the door. For her, he can take the pain. His daughter calls him from the kitchen, asking if he wants dinner. Nah, honey. I'm gonna hit the sack. Not wanting her to see his bruises. He heads into the bedroom, collapsing, and then looks up as he hears a meow coming from the window. At that window is a stray cat with a note pinned to its collar. If you risk your life, you deserve the rewards. It gives him an address to go to. Darkness falls. It's been months of fighting endlessly. Batman fought against Failsafe, a robot built to stop Batman, then the Red Mask, the progenitor of the Joker, and he fought against the multiverse and then Insomnia. After all of that, Batman had finally collapsed, his body falling into an exhausted sleep, and he sits there in the darkness. But he isn't alone. Zurinar is there, reminding Batman that he is the preparation. Zerunar smiles from behind his mental cage, a psychotic Batman ready at any time to take over Batman's body. Rest up, Bruce. Gotham needs you. They need Batman. Zerunar says as he steps back into the shadows. Bruce opens his eyes and finds himself inside of the medical room of the Batcave, Oracle immediately beeping in on the comms, shocked that he is finally awake and explains that he has been unconscious for eight weeks after the Night Terrors event. We think it had something to do with your possession by dead man, she explains and Batman nods, walking out of the cave. Oracle, let's talk later so you can catch me up. He then cuts the comms and in no time he is once again swinging through the rooftops of Gotham City. He has been away for too long. He needs his city to know that Batman is still there, but it doesn't take him long to find a crime. Two cat burglars who have thought out everything. They cut the alarm so that they wouldn't get caught, and as one begins to cut through the glass of the diamond display, the other keeps watch. He looks up to see Batman approaching them from the shadows. Run! It's him! He shouts, turning to escape, and Batman recognizes them. Marcus Tolliver, Stan Bevington. A bit out of your depth, I'd say. He says, knowing that both men usually act as hired muscle for the colorful villains of Gotham City. Batman chases both men around the corner, finding a grappling hook and an open window. He pulls himself up, and he looks at the empty street below. He then leaps back down into the museum, finding a nearby vent open and the diamond gone. He's surprised that the two goons managed to trick him. Something's changed in Gotham. He whispers to himself, Meanwhile, at Selina Kyle's new training facility, she trains the former goons and thugs of Gotham to become the professional cat burglars who only target the rich and don't resort to violent methods. She has just gotten word that Batman has returned. So she gathers her closest lieutenants and warns them. He's awake, she tells them, and panic moves through the group as Selina folds her arms, running through the new rules. I'm putting external training on hold. Newbies stay in the training compound walls and get word out to the graduates to be extra cautious out there. She says as she turns away from her soldiers, pouring herself a drink. Time to call another meeting, she says as she gulps down the liquid. Elsewhere, Maxi Zeus is shouting at the one goon he has left, ordering him to destroy the electrical power plant. But a voice shouts from the shadows as Robin leaps down to fight. You are in need of some time at Arkham, Robin says, the thug putting up his hands and backing away while Zeus runs. You're better than this, Craig, he says as he pushes past the goon, rushing outside, finding Maxi Zeus is already down, with Batman standing over his body. Robin, looks like he didn't even need me, but Robin doesn't even care, rushing forward and hugging Batman. It's good to see you too, son. The two briefly catch up before Tim asks Batman if he's talked to Oracle. I did. 
but I disconnected my comms. I need to clear my head. Batman explains and Tim nods. She just alerted all of us. Catwoman wants to talk. Masks off. So, a little time later, the extended members of the Bat family begin to sit inside of the kitty cat club. They all look up as Batman and Robin walk through the door. Father, did you enjoy your nap? Damien asks from his table. Before the group can talk, Catwoman steps out into the lounge stage. She greets them all and quickly explains that since Batman has been asleep, she has begun a new mission. She's taking goons and thugs that formerly worked for Gotham's rogues, and she stopped the endless cycle of violence by giving them new skills. She is training them to become cat burglars. Her trainees now have rules, such as only targeting the rich and never hurting anyone. She explains that violent crimes have gone down 75% since she has begun. This is why your streets are quiet. It's why your villains are floundering, and it's getting big enough that I need you all to do something for me. Leave us alone. Dick shakes his head. This isn't a solution. You just changed the crime. But the group doesn't entirely agree. Duke, Kate, Steph, and Tim all see the differences in the city and point it out. This doesn't sit right with me. I think we need more data. Maybe Selena can show us how she's training them? Tim admits, and Batman steps forward, glaring at Selena. No. I can't believe what I'm hearing. We have a mission. We stop crime. We don't allow some crimes to go because they appear to be more acceptable than others. But Selena becomes angry with him, pointing out that his life is about the mission. That's why they couldn't be married. After all of his years of fighting, it took her to come in and try things a different way for the city to actually improve. Gotham doesn't need Batman, Bruce. It needed me, she snaps. And from the bar, Jason, the Red Hood raises his glass. Ha! Ah, she ain't wrong, Bruce! He calls out and the rest continue to discuss it. But Batman turns, stalking out of the club. Outside, Tim catches up with them, asking that they at least talk this out instead of him just leaving. Batman shakes his head as the Batmobile pulls up. Everyone in that room is a victim of a crime. And now, you all want to decide who gets to be a victim? There's nothing to debate. He says as he gets into the car, driving away. A short time later, Selina returns to her home, where she finds her security, Dario, sulking on the couch. She walks past him and into the bathroom, where she hears the door creak open behind her. Hey, Selina, Jason says as she turns around. Nice place you got here, but you need a security guard who doesn't mope on the couch. Jason says as Selina moves quickly, kicking Jason in the chest and knocking him through the door. You followed me? To my home? She growls as she rushes back at him pressing her attack, but Jason blocks the blow and punches her. Bruce really rattled you back there, didn't he? There's no way that I wouldn't have been able to follow you before that meeting. Jason says as he kicks her down, and she spins, kicking him hard in the face, cracking his mask, knocking him to the ground. Get out of my house, Jason! But Jason puts up his hands, telling her that she's going to need more than her crew to make this work. She's going to need someone whispering in Batman's ear. He tells her that he gets the plan, and he wants to be a part of it. She looks at him for a moment before handing him a note, pointing him to her lieutenants. And I don't think I need to say this, but no killing. The last thing we need is an even angrier Batman. Elsewhere in the city, Roland slips inside of a high-rise apartment. He's been training with Selena's crew, learning the ropes, and he's gotten good at it. He cased the place, made sure the family was out of town, and cut the silent alarm. He slips inside, working the safe, getting it open in a matter of moments. And then he pulls out the jewels, staring down at them in surprise. He knows they'll allow him and his daughter to live well for months. But there's a sound behind him. He turns to find a young woman aiming a pistol. Don't move! She shouts with fear in her voice, her hands shaking. It's later that the police lights bathe the street in red and blue. Batman stands amongst them. He walks over to the body, looking down at it, a frown crossing his face as he recognizes Roland as one of the thugs of the city. You know him? Guy broke into a condo on the 20th floor, owned by Hannah Zhang of the Zhang Chemicals. Her family is on vacation in Central City, but she couldn't join them because of work. The lead detective explains, but Batman has stopped listening. He knows Roland. He knows the cycle of violence the thug was a part of to make ends meet, to care for the daughter that is now an orphan. He grits his teeth with anger. In his mind, he can hear the voice of Zurinar. The mission has been tainted. We stop crime. Because we're Batman. And there you have it. The setup has begun. Catwoman thinks she's got the better plan. 
until someone actually dies. And of course we know how Batman feels about crime in general. But as you can tell, some of the Bat family is kind of against Batman on going against Catwoman, so it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. Make sure you like and subscribe so you can see when the next episode's coming out. It will be coming out very soon because we're going to see how some of the Bat family reacts to Batman. Don't forget to check out our YouTube memberships to get early access, and I'll see you next time right here.